Hello, 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 hello. Buchanan, Buchanan, Buchanan here. I'm listening to Break Every Chain, Break Every Chain. Watch the cop. Getting back with you from yesterday. I had to leave. Uh, oh, as you notice, I'm slow day. I have slowed down. And so let me pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever, and ever and ever, and ever and ever. Amen. Uh, God bless all of you, and God bless all the people that's going through the storms, and seen and unseen. God bless all those people over there that have to go to motels, homes submerged underwater, and lives have been devastated. Father, I stretch my hand out to thee. No other power I know, and no other power I hope that they know, because you're in control. They can have his way, but you're, you're the final, final author and finisher. But uh, like I said, uh, my prayers go with them. My prayers go with anyone that's in need of prayer and don't think they need it, but they need it. Uh, uh, my heart goes out to them. I was looking at the devastation and just, you know, their pain is my pain. You know, I'm not there, but I understand it. You know, I know, you know, I know it's hard. I know they're going through some terrible times. And like I said, all I can do is pray for them. And that's what I do. I pray for all the families and the animals. I've, I've seen online that a lot of the pets have been displaced. And someone's starting a petition about the pets, trying to get them to stay locally rather than have them dispersed out. But here in Kentucky, we have some of the animals here. Uh, they need adoption. So... They're going to be dispersed to different shelters. They have been dispersed to different shelters. I think we had 70. So they are affected too. Uh, what I want to say is, uh, what I want to say is, uh, <laughs> oh, it's been, I, I was speeding yesterday. That's coming down from caffeine. That's another reason why I need to leave the job. You have to constantly drink caffeine, do something to keep yourself awake. And my thing is, the only thing I could think of is caffeine. And when you're coming down off of it, that's what it does. You, you speed talk and everything. And so, yeah. Oh, Lord, that's why I'm like, well, whatever. So, uh, so strange things have occurred. Like I said, I told you about those things and, I just have what I'm noticing is God slowed me down for a reason, so it's good the car broke down because I realized I hadn't been taking care of myself, and you know my body. If I I needed to slow down, I needed to really slow. Down. I need to slow down now. But um, uh, I answered the phone. I checked my voicemail the other day, and somebody was praying. All you could hear is somebody praying. So I'm gonna play it for you. Uh, you just hear something about praying scary. It, it creeped me, as my grandbaby say, it, it creeped me out. It creeped me out, Granny. But it creeped me out. Uh, uh, I gotta find it. Uh, let me pause this while I find it real quick. Here it is. Listen to this. This was out my voice, man. In the name of Jesus. And there would be a difference between those who served you and those who have not in the loss of property. Father, in Jesus' name, we commit this to you. Amen. 
I also want to invite you to be with us this coming Sunday, uh, tomorrow through Tuesday. We're having the most powerful meetings we've ever had this year. I hope you will join us. Brenda Kuhneman, which is a great prophetess, she'll be speaking in the morning. And I'm Yeah, did you hear it? Yeah. It cut out. Excited to hear what she's going to say. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yeah. I was invited to church. Did y'all hear that? To show y'all that I'm not crazy. But they started off with prayer. And that was a church. Do y'all want to know what church that was that invited me to come to their church? And they have been, they have been emailing me, and I, you know, I'm not being mad. I just it dismissed the emails, sent them to spam. So they called me. Now to show you, uh, I'm just gonna let you follow me, and I'm a sh just listen to this. Okay, you know, and I know the phone had been cut off for almost a month, twenty something days. The phone was turned off. So. How did they get this telephone number? And do you know what church that was that invited me to church? They did the praying on that. Can you guess what church that is that invited me? Mm -hmm. That mysteriously came up with my telephone number. <laughs> that's Chris, that's uh, Evangel, Evangel Church. That's the pastor. That's the pastor there at Evangel Church show y'all ain't crazy so where did he come from why you invite me to church I said it could have been like a spam thing but it couldn't be because you had my full number and you left a voicemail on there I don't want to get deep with you but there's things that pop off and I I don't feel like getting real deep I already told you a lot of things that happen and have people come at you and try to pull you away from churches and as you see, I don't have to lie to you. There's the evidence of what I'm talking about. I'm, I was invited to church, so it would have been Sunday. I think that Sunday might be this Sunday. I got it last week, so it's probably for yeah, it was for this Sunday, which I didn't get to go to church. But yeah, invited me to church. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I'd be telling you, I'm not crazy. Now, what was that about? <laughs> what was that about? Hmm. But I have a lot of people that have been inviting me to different churches, you know, which is trying. Maybe they heard, yeah, they probably heard me say that I go to any church that open the door. That church right there, no. Evangel, no. Nah, it's a different story. But other churches have heard me say that I go to, I'll come to any church, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to comment on that right now. But like I said, I know I have to slow down and take care of me. Oh, Lord Jesus, I did. I put so much on my plate and so much on my car, and uh, that wasn't wise, so I don't know. Oh, Lord, just taking a break. I know that. I have to take a break. I have to slow down and not lend myself out. I'm doing too many things, and I'm alone doing it, but I have been trying to recruit people, so I can't, excuse me, I can't say that. I know I need help, so I've been uh, contacting people, so... I will continue to do that. I'm gonna get some more help. Uh, like I said, trying to get time to do it and dealing with this these hours is ridiculous. Uh, like I said, I mean it's just weird. Like I said, I, I just have to um, I have to deal with I just have to deal with it. But um, God is always on the throne. You know, I've been listening to some powerful sermons and stuff. You know, from the past, I listened to uh, some bass and I listened to some Jamal Bryant. I know a lot of people don't like him and stuff like that, but it's not the message. Or sometimes you just got to listen to the message. And his message was powerful. It was called Don't Eat My Car. And he was talking about recovering after a failure. And it is hard to get up, especially when it involves relationships. And I was like, yeah, you know, things like that I, I, I have to look at. You know what I'm saying? I haven't been looking at everything. And, you know, if you have to have me time, it's <laughs> fantastic. Say, I need some me time. What's that, Monica and all of them, I need some me time. And I haven't had any me time, and so I have to do that because God wants us happy. 
contrary to what people want to say. You don't get all enthralled in it in the God without having some enjoyment. You have to enjoy yourself in life. And uh, thank God, though, I have had, I was thinking this, this morning, you know, uh, I've had a wonderful summer. I was thinking, oh, my summer was weak, but my summer was, I had the most fantastic time of my life when I went to the, uh, uh, the park and they had the gospel fest with West Morgan and uh, 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 a couple of more artists. Okay, their names leaving me, but you know uh, this means war and your boy uh, Dally, whatever I can't think of his name, but a bunch of them was there, and I mean it was fantastic to just be close to them and just to see them and how they showed up on time. And I mean, I my hats off to all the people that prepared it. I mean, it, the timing was perfect. They would have artists come out, then they had preachers come out. I mean, and then the artists, and I mean, everything was in sync. It was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. Just to sit in a park and just sit there and enjoy some gospel music and be in that atmosphere of church, you know, with a whole lot of drinking. You know, we had a couple of people do, do that little drinking thing, and the one would get up and dance off the gospel music. But all in, I mean, it was great. People selling their little products and stuff. I mean, just to be in a Christian atmosphere, it was so great, and I love that. And so when I say enjoy ourselves, we don't have to go out. You know, it's nothing wrong with going to clubs and stuff like that, but we can enjoy ourselves. I know with me, I enjoy myself being around Christian atmosphere. I like jazz. I like different things like that. And uh, one time Bates had one, and it tripped me out. The lady said, I never heard of that. I've been here, you know, a long time, and I never heard of it, but they had a beautiful little session. They had some poetry reading, and there was a lot of people at the church that do a lot of recite a lot of, of poetry, and uh, so I like events like that. There's a lot of things to do. I mean, there are things that you can do, Christian. There are not a lot of things that I am aware of, and so like I said, I, I want to do me some me. I'm going to do me some me time because I have to to keep myself sane, you know. Um, Mom always said, "I work in no play, make Jack a dull boy," and you know what I'm saying. You know, so I got to do that because I've been having a headache and like I said, I'm stressed and I'm dealing with things on this job. And so I need to take and rest, you know, when I say rest mentally, you know, rest it mentally. Sometimes we need to rest physically. And I'll be darned, I was talking to my daughter because she, you know, I paid her to take me to the to the mall. My, my, it's my child. <laughs> she, she got her hand out. You better believe that. She she don't play. And my grandbaby, granny, 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 he let everybody in every store we went to know that he was with his granny. You know, Lord knows I couldn't get no play. I couldn't play it off and act like, okay, that's, they think that's my child. You never could do that. Not with his cat. Oh, my God, not with his cat. King Hezekiah. She named him King Hezekiah. Yes, she did. Beautiful name. And I mean, he lets you know he is present. And he goes, Granny, 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 watch me swim. Oh, my God. Then he laid on the carpet and start swimming. Oh, Lord. Oh, well, he's something else. <laughs> oh, Lord. But, uh, oh, Lord, I lost my, lost my chance to talk. But, uh, like I said, uh, we was talking. I thank you, Jesus. We were talking, me and my daughter, and this is what rest does, too. keeps you focused. Uh, I, had, I had good rest last night. Um, my daughter was telling me about somebody she knows that's thinking about committing suicide. And, and, and was telling her about it, and I was like, oh, my God, this spirit of suicide. That's why I entitled yesterday's little piece. I entitled suicide and the spirit of Jezebel. There is a lot of that going on. You know what I'm saying? We need to pray against that. And I pray against it. Father, I stretch my hand after thee. Ooh, banish that spirit of suicide, Lord. Open up counselors and people that they can go to, medication, whatever they need, Lord. Throw out that demon in the name of Jesus. I pray right now. Mm, Lord, all the devastation and these times, you know, people are looking over it. Instead of looking at it, these hurricanes and all these things, it's not us now. It's them today. It's not us today. But we need to start thinking it could be. Is your soul right? Are you right with God? Yeah, maybe you're going to die and you don't have to answer. But maybe you're going to die and God's going to call you out and ask you, what did you do? You know, yeah, some people like to gamble like that. Go for it. 
But I want to hear him call and say, yeah, well done, because I hear him now lots of times tell me he's pleased with me. And other times I'm like, why did you, what, what was that for? I'm not going to say the sugarcoat nothing with you. I'm at that point right now. I'm like, what is this for? You know, although I love him, I, just because I, I love God doesn't mean that I don't have conversations with him and just and wonder about him and have arguments. And I argue with him. You know, I argue and I don't win, but <laughs> I open my mouth and I voice my opinion. Let me say that. You know, the guy like, what is this for? And there's a lot of things that happen in my life I don't understand. You know, I don't understand what, what it's for. But I still love him and I just go ahead and do his will. But I know now that the car, the way it broke down, you know, like I said, I just know this had to slow down. Because I don't have nobody to see me and to tell me. Stop for the yard and say, hey, you know what? You need to slow your roll, you know. And um, those are the things I look for. And, um, you know, sometimes, like I tell people, you can't always sit back and wait for people to come to you and pat you on your back. I ask you how you doing. Sometimes you have to vocalize when a person say, how are you today? Well, you know what? <laughs> you know, a lot of people hate people to do that and come out and tell how they truly feel. But true, you know, you know, you know, I'm not doing so well today. You know, I need a hug today. There's nothing wrong with that. Quite often, I need a hug today. You can't hug everybody because some people take it wrong. But, you know, sometimes if you really feel like you need a hug and you feel it's okay, hug, then tell a person, you know, I need a hug today. You know, I wish someone would say something nice to me today. Give me a compliment today. You know what I'm saying? You know, so like I said, sometimes we have to ask for help. Help is not going to just come and God's not just going to send help your way all the time. You have to ask sometimes for it. You know, you want to kill yourself. Why? Open your mouth and tell God why. Why? You know. Bills and things are mounting up, which it is. It, it is a lot of pressure when you have bills, because especially you deal with a little guilt of like, okay, I made this bill and I was trying to pay it, but then what should I do? You know, you wonder what should you do? Should, should you file bankruptcy? If you file bankruptcy, yeah, you get debt collection. Then they come at you and they that's bad. That's bad on your report. So then you like, what should you do? Then you try to pay people back. This is a poor man's story. <laughs> you try to pay one debt back. And then this is what I don't like about the credit report. As soon as you start paying one debt back, all the others look out your credit report and see you paying that one debt back. And then they bounce on you. So then rather than you coming out that little $20 a month, here they come out. So then you coming out 100 a month. Then you're going backwards rather than going forward again. Then if something happens, you lose your job. You can't never. If you just keep digging a hole for yourself. And people don't understand that. And a lack of understanding and a lack of communication I mean, I'm not going to say lack of communication because with all my debtors, I told my whole story. And then they still came. And then, like I said, this part, yeah, I didn't tell them, okay, when I start paying you, then here it is, these other people cost the credit report. Y'all reporting everybody's business, telling everything that's going on with the money, and then you lose. Whereas if you shut your mouth, TransUnion, and out of creditors, then you could go ahead and knock this person out. Then take your time and knock that out. But it doesn't work in your favor like that, you know. It's a poor man's story. It's poor man's truth. That's really what I like to call it, a poor man's truth. Because nobody sat there. It's just like when you're on welfare. They give you the 200 something dollars for three kids or three whatever for two or three kids. And then they give you a whole lot. They give you more food stamps than they do money. But then turn around after so long when you do get the job, they hurry up and cut you off your food stamp and your welfare rather than give you a chance to bounce on your feet and do better for yourself. Really take the reins, rings that guide the horse. Rather than take, give you a chance to take the reins for yourself, they come in and cut you out. As soon as you sit in the wagon, they take it. You know, those are the things that they don't deal with. It takes a poor man to talk about a poor man. It takes a poor man to know what a poor man's blues are. You know, I love the blues. People would say, "Oh my God, I used to go to clubs and play," but they like, "Who is depressed like it?" Oh, like it don't depress me. It, it the blues can't awaken me. I don't know. It depress some people. It don't depress me. It just tells it like it is. They call it stormy Monday, but Tuesday's just as bad. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. And I love to listen to my Bobby Blue Blade. You know, I'll take care of you. Mm. Yeah, Johnny Taylor. We're running out of lives.
I love all my blues. I like old music and things. I'd like to go to a club and listen to that. You know, I like things like that. I like instrumental, earth, wind, and fire. I love the band, you know, the horns and the saxophone and the instruments, the electric guitar. I love, the electric, love to hear the electric guitar. You know, I love things like that. I love vocals. I love just hearing the vocals. You know, a person just saying acapella. I like stuff like that, too. But um, I miss jazz in the park because I had to work. Central Park used to always do that. It used to be a lot of events in Louisville, a lot of places in Louisville you could go. All different times of the day, you could go and you could sit in a place and listen to some nice music. I played the jukeboxes, and a lot of those things are gone, you know. <laughs> Did y'all hear me? I'm gone. And so, uh, yeah, I reminisce, because sometimes the past can be your greatest, greatest asset, and a lot of people don't know that. You know, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to restore, come back to Him, put Him on the pedestal, put Him first. And so many times... You know, we pushed him away. And now, nah, don't come at me talking about, oh, what you said, that's because the, the storms are coming. You know, you know what's what. <laughs> you know, you know what's what. But God wants us to come to him and obey his ways and obey him. You know, like I said, a lot of people don't believe in God, but sometimes when you get into adversity, it makes you think, <laughs> believe me. You you do you do you might have doubted him, <laughs> but I tell you what, a lot of people become very aware that he exists real real quick. Either you love him or you hate him. When devastation like that hits, you know. I don't know why the hurricane came. I'm quite sure a lot of people are running to ask the pastor that why is if God loves us, why did God let the hurricanes come and Take our take our house and take our home, take our family, love one, kill people in our family. Why why did God allow this? Because God God's in control of everything. So why did God let this happen? Why did I lose my home, my car, my everything? No job. Why are we standing here in the cold in the rain? We suffering, we shivering, our kids are suffering. Our kids are looking for us to answer and asking us why. Why mama? Why did God let this happen to us? What are, what is the answer to be to this? Oh, yeah, we're setting our pins and needles, and we want to answer that question, don't we? Yeah, we want to answer, and some of you know what the answer is. Oh, I'm not being a smart butt, but what's the answer? It rains on the just and the unjust, doesn't it? When God has a reason, his ways are not our ways. We don't know. Like I said, it's you today. It could be us tomorrow, you know, and so... We've had devastation here when the lights was out, you know. And believe me, a lot of people that didn't believe in God, they started believing in him real quick. So he has a, a way of waking people up. And pick up the Bible. What I would tell my kids, my grandbabies, when they ask questions like that, I either look up some answers, and like I said, I used to, but now I, I I know too much of I know a little bit about him. I, don't, I know much about God, and I know that He does things, and I don't understand it. But usually it'll work out for my good. I, it's a lesson for me to learn when things happen with my with my life. It's something to to because we had a conversation like that this morning. I was talking to God, and I'm like, you know, you know, it's a little private thing, but I was talking to Him about that, and uh, like I said, I wait for the answer to come. You know, because some things I'm like, you know, I, I, what did I do? You know, I, what was I supposed to learn out of it? Well, I'm going to let you in because I don't like somebody talking to me in riddles. It gets on my nerves, so I'm not going to talk to you in riddles. I just tell you how I talk to God and what my conversation was. And you can step into my personal life, and this will let, help you talk to your children about devastation and these hurricanes that's happening because children are very wise, and they are going to want to know why is God allowing this because this is a very crucial time in a child's life and in any person's life but really in a child's life because this can bend them to God I can bend them away from God and um when I was talking to God this morning I said you know I can understand God some of the things my car got stolen I don't understand that 
I was trying to file for bankruptcy and they played on me with my money. So I lost a thousand and something dollars and I haven't gotten that back. You know, because sometimes things are happening, I got to work it out and I get all of it back. But I don't understand that situation. And then I don't know if they got punished for it or not, because sometimes he'll punish people when they do wrong to me. So then I'm like, okay, what was that? You know, wow, okay, maybe, okay, yeah, maybe I, I, I see a little bit of some things I did, but wow, like that. You know, so how can you punish me, you know, give me a spanking for something that I, I wasn't aware of? If I don't have the social skills and I never was taught certain things, why would you come back and punish me for something that I didn't know and I wasn't aware of? I don't understand it. So these are the conversations I have with God, you know, and, that, and that's what I'm waiting for an answer about, you know. Well, what was that for? Like, I still don't understand why, you know, I was working. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you real talk. And when you talk to your children, talk real talk. And when your children want to know why they got to laugh something, go into the Bible and show them how the children and Israelites was in the, in the Bible and they was in the wilderness. And how they was in there suffering because they didn't obey God. I'm not saying you didn't do that, but I'm saying do you look at show the children to suffer. Show them in the Bible in other times past where people suffered and went through things. The widow that was there with her son, her and her son was going to eat the last portion of food and then they were going to die until the prophet showed up. And then they fed him and then she had enough stuff in her cupboard. You know, talk about that. And then the pastor was just talking about, which messed me up. He was talking about how Paul was beaten and they threw him outside the gates and stuff like that. And he's talking about God, the worshiping God, and they beat the stuffing out of him. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, just talk to your children like that and let them see that in life it's what you choose to believe. But there's pain and suffering in life. You're going to have pain and suffering in life. And it's up to you to choose on what you're going to believe. Because we're at the end of the day, we can't make our children, when they get of age, we can't make them believe in God. They, that's going to be their choice on what they want to believe. All we can do is feed them what we know about God, you know. And that's what I pray. It's just like a person that believes in the devil. They teach their children to worship the devil. They teach their children to hate. They start when they're very young and they embed that in their children until their children get of age where they can think for themselves. And so... Like I said, that's what I would do, and that's what I do with my grandbabies. When I don't, if I don't have the answers, I look and try to find the answers. But I believe in God, and that's what I pass to them, you know, because I know people, I'm going to stay on the subject. Anyway, that's how I talk to God. I just tell him that, and I don't understand why my car was stolen at the time when I was trying to work and get on my feet, and I was trying to pay bills. And then I look at it, maybe I should have kept, kept on catching the bus out there, but then I got to keep looking at this person that stole my car. And then she's running around, running her mouth, trying to get people on her side, which wasn't no side, but she's trying to pull people on her side to cover. Really, she was trying to cover up the wrong that she did. And then I found out I didn't know about like her, but I'm supposed to be with her, so I don't understand that. I know God's supposed to show up and fight your battles if you sit still, but I don't know, like I said. So, like I said, I have questions, too. I have questions I ask him, but, you know, like I said, sometimes we just got to turn to him and ask him questions, you know, and just pray that he gives us the answer, you know, and sometimes he gives us the answer and it's still like, okay, uh, okay, what, you know, so, like I said, some things, um, I don't know, you just, I don't know. Like I said, I know I love him. I know he's been good to me. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. I know my good days outweigh my bad days. And like I said, I was sitting back listening to people talk about they did this for the summer and went out of town. You know, a lot of my relatives went out of town. But I, I failed to look at my blessings. Sometimes we get to looking at other people's things that they do, which we call a blessing. But we look at other things that people do, and we fail to look at our things. And in all, I've been blessed, and I thank God. I met Jack Kalen Carr, things I wanted to do. I, I, I God blessed me to do and able me to do. You know, uh, there was a lot of things. God kept me, and I, 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 I missed my blessing in saying that although my car did break down, God kept me safe. The car could have stopped in the middle of traffic. I mean, things, yeah, I, 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 I want to come back and emphasize that. 
you know, and this is what I want to say. It helps encourage. This is what I do to encourage my grandbabies, my kids, to let them to teach them to love the God that I serve. They can make their own decision later on, but right now, this is what I believe in. This is what I try to instill in them. Don't just listen to what I'm saying. They see my walk. They not like a lot of people in the pub, but they with me and they see my walk. They see my walk. They hear my talk, but they see my walk. They see the controversy and all the things that I've been through, and they see me overcome. And that's that's a witness to them. And at the same time, when I'm over, when I'm down, I'm loving God. When I'm up, I'm loving God. So they see that. They see that. They're witness to that. And like I said, I know some people probably say, "Well, darn, you love God. Why don't you get God to get you a car? <laughs> you know, why right? you love God? You know." So I, I know there's a lot of wives, you know. But you know what? I thought about that, and I said, people probably like, "Oh yeah, why don't God get her car?" Well, you know what? It's not about God get me a car. It's about me taking the initiative to take the car to a real shop and get it checked out and evaluated. But I'm cheap. And really, I'm just scared if I take it there. I already know a lot of things wrong with the car. They're going to want to hurry up and do all the whole, what you call it. A thousand dollars here, $125 an hour to do, look at the car and all that. Then the label. And when you finish, the car, the, the label's more than a car. That's why you see cars sitting on up. Uh, a repair shop where the person didn't go back and get it because the repairs was more than what the cars were. And so I already know a lot of that. But like I said, that's not on God. That's on me. So like I said, but this time I'm planning on do, moving a little wiser and then rather than relying on somebody else to tell me about my car, a lot of things like I took the initiative on my own now. I'm a, I have somebody that's going to look at the car and do a repair. I would do it myself. But I think it's a little too technical. It's a little too technical for me. You know, it's electrical stuff. I don't like, I don't want to do that. I, which I hope this person really know what they're doing. And uh, then uh, the, uh, it needed a battery. And a battery is the heart. And I forgot my own training. And, and that's what God's teaching me too. And, and, you know, look for a lesson in things. I think that's what we don't do. Look for a lesson in it. I, and I know the hurricane, I know at the time, believe me, I've been through devastation. I've been through, whoa, I've been through that. I've been through things. I've been on my deathbed and was wondering, whoa, what, what? <laughs> you know, what, what? So, believe me, I, I know. I know about storms and, and, and believe me. I, uh, mm. The lights went out here in Louisville. My mother had our time and she's staying with my daughter. Let me tell you about what I know so you don't think, oh, she's just sitting there talking because she don't know what it's like to be in a hurricane and be in a storm and the transfer, all the power was at. Yes, I do, boo-boo. It wasn't a whole lot. I've been in the water, been in where the water was rising at a house when we lived on pa uh, uh, 37th Street, my mama's house. I'm in the house. I was, oh, maybe 15, 16 years old. I might have been, I might have been 14, 14 or 15 years old. We was in the house. Mama was out somewhere. I don't know. I don't think she was at church. I don't know where Mama was. Mama went somewhere. And uh, I was in the house, and we had the two foster kids. We had a child with a hydrocephalic head, little Richard. Little Richard Nunley. His head is extra large. My mother took him in. My mother was a foster parent. Tell you what I know. Tell you a little quick story about Buchanan. We had Blue Richard, he had a hydrocephalic head. Little Richard at the time, maybe, oh, uh, it might have been six or seven. It might have been seven years old, seven or eight. And then we had Robin, Robin Hurst. She was a monoloid, you know. Little Richard was mixed. Well, he had Italian in him. And uh, Robin, uh, I forget what she was mixed with, but we had them. And uh, Robin was maybe... Oh, I don't know. Robin was 10, maybe 10, 10, 11. So I had them in the house, and I babysat, and Mama's gone. And so I don't think we had the little uh, Dion yet. We had a little boy. I don't think we had him then, because my mother ended up being a foster parent. She ended up having three kids, but the two was there. And anyway, it was a flood. There was everything in Louisville, Sample Cot Homes, all that was a, a lot of the field over there was underwater, and the water was raising to the step. And Mama's uh, ex-boyfriend, Samson, he's the main person. He called me. He said, are you all right? He said, your mother's there? I said, no, nah, she's not here. He said, are you okay? You and the kids okay? I said, yeah. I said, but the water's rising. The water was rising to the top of the step. We had three steps, and the water was rising. It was like that third step. 
And he said, well, if anything happens, it get worse, you call me and you need to come out of there. You know, the, you know, so you can get out. And I said, okay. But thank God it stopped there. But yeah, I know what it's like when water's rising to be afraid. And you can't come out. Yeah. And when the when it flooded like that, it brought the rats. When the water start, when the water ended up submerging, it brought out gophers. I call them gophers. The rats was big. So everybody's house started being infested with it. A lot of people lost their homes because they didn't have insurance. Flood insurance. <laughs> come on with it. I can step with you with that, boo boo. Yes, I can. A lot of people around us did not have insurance, period. Then a lot didn't have flood insurance. So a lot of people's TVs and everything. I remember riding through the neighborhood, people's TVs and furniture, couches and stuff setting out their brand new stuff, brand new cars that had floated through the street. So yes, I've been there. Thank God, not that I know of anybody, but I do recall that. So I've been there. And then, like I said, the lights went out in Louisville. We didn't have no power for, what, two or three days. Yeah, some people longer. And we had to run around here. The stores and stuff, the stores didn't have power. They was, food was on spoil. People had to block it, uh, watch the store to keep people from breaking into the store. So, yes, yeah, been there. Had to sit in the house with my mother. My daughter just had a baby. She's in the hospital, which the hospital had generators. And the hospital, most of downtown, by them being, uh, uh, basically having money, they had generators, so the lights was on downtown. So a lot of people was down that area, you know, trying to get their phones, because when the power went out, you know, we didn't have telephones. Hello. So, yeah, I can understand it. I'm not talking stuff I don't know. I feel your pain, because I've been there. Yeah, I've been there, like I said. Um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of people lost their lives in Louisville when we had it, and it wasn't from just the, the uh, the lights being out, it was because when the lights went out, a lot of people were stealing and people were fighting, so people started shooting and killing each other. So, yeah, it was a lot, and some lives was lost. Whew. Mm. People fighting to go to one gas station when, come to find out, there was three or four other gas stations open because I ran out of gas and I had to go try to find a gas station. People was fighting at uh, just certain gas stations because everybody wanted to go to one particular one. Come to find out, it was another one open. Let's be very careful of that. That's panic. That's panic. I thank God for protecting me. I didn't take a drink. I thank God for him protecting and watching over me and my family then and for the people in the neighborhood. So like I said, yeah, been there. Give me a been there. Been there, done that. And that's why I said my prayers go out to you. My prayers really go out to you. Um, oh, God is good. God is good. Like I said, when the lights came back on, you know, I was talking to a guy. Lord, ooh, don't make me bring it up. I was talking to a guy. He's going to tell me I can come over his house, but I can't bring my kids. I'm looking at him. Y'all don't know me. You don't know me. But believe me, he'll never say anything like that again to me. <laughs> like anybody. You know, I didn't kill him or nothing like that. But, you know, yeah, I told him how I feel. You know, my grandbabies to this day, my kids, they don't even like him because they heard it. You said it in front of my grandbaby. My grandbaby dislikes him to this day. You know, we haven't seen him, but yeah, she disliked him to this day when he said that. They have cruel people and evil, evilness to come out. That's why I said, watch for the lesson in things when it happens. Because right there, I would have never thought that would come out of his mouth. But that came out of his mouth. He should have swallowed it back, but that came out of his mouth. Once something come out of your mouth, you can't take it back. That's why God said, watch that tongue. Tame that tongue. Tame that tongue. You know, that tongue will tame you. But yes, he did say that. I was like the evil. And that really severed a relationship. Never wanted to be with him. Never trusted him after that. You know. And we went through a lot anyway. He was evil. We tried to sue me one time. I should have knew he was evil. <laughs> Strange bedfellows. Hello. <laughs> Hmm, that's another story. So anyway, like I said, um, oh Lord, like I said, I had to be thankful when the car broke down. I was on that subject. I have to be thankful. The car broke down. Thank God I had legs. I was able to walk. And he showed me, even though I was tired, I still was able to walk. If I had to, I would have walked down, you know what I'm saying, to get home. And it's strange how you think you're tired, but God can restore your strength. And he did. He restored my strength. And I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful for him. You know, when I made it home, I was glad to be home. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be like, I can't stay at this place. But whoa, when you been out, do you have a bit home? When you tired, you get home, you just glad. I know I was glad. You know, I was glad to be home. And I thank him for the opportunities, you know, for the bills getting paid, you know. 
I, I thank him for it slowing me down because sometimes he don't slow me down. I, I, I get into myself real quick and and you can get sick and you get weary because we have to rest. Our bodies was created to rest. Jesus rested. God rested. I'm sorry. God rested. You know, he took a break after he created the heaven and the earth. So therefore, we need to rest too. We need to slow down. And I don't believe God rested. I believe he just was like, let me look at what I did. <laughs> Everybody say, say, let me look and see what I did. You know what I'm saying? Let me look over this. That's what he did. He just paused for a minute. Let me look at this. Ah, oh, this is awesome. Let me see how this is going to go. Let's move to prehistoric animals and all of this stuff. Let's, let's see how this goes. And then he went out and he did what he did. You know. Yeah. It's so great. He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. Something about the name of Jesus. Oh, he's sweet. I know. I don't know. I don't know. I, like I said, I, I, I just know him. I know him and I praise him. I've seen him show up and show out. I mean, you know, I, death used to be a father to me. It used to break me down when somebody would die. And it still affects me a lot when somebody passed. But at the same time, God taught me something through that. Is that if with my auntie, it was devastating and with a lot of people in my family, it bothered me, my little cousins and stuff, is that they no longer are here and sometimes I had to look and see it was selfish. We have to look at, I had to look at the selfishness. I want them here, I want them to be doing life and God's like, okay, depending on how they was taken, okay, I, I, they away, they away, you know, this had to be done, but you know, you go on, you go on, you know, you go on, you know. And sometimes that's all we can do is we go on, but we learn. Like my cousin was murdered and through her death I learned you don't let men just beat you. You don't let her get with people. He was strung out on drugs and she was trying to make the relationship work, you know. Uh, There's a whole lot of stuff going on. You know, he kept putting his hands on and she was tolerating that beautiful, educated woman. But she, you know, just, so don't ever get it twisted thinking the only people get beat on. And don't ever think I don't understand it. Yeah, seen it. But because I knew that he murdered her, it strengthened me to not want to be in a relationship like that. It came my way, but thank God he gave me the strength to come out of that. So, yeah. So, her death wasn't in vain, you know. So I always remember Margie, you know, he shot in the head, didn't try to say she killed herself. They had to do an investigation on it and found out he killed her. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Just look for the lesson in the pain. Look for a lesson in the pain. Look for a lesson in the pain, you know. And then just look at the, the just, just look for the, Oh wow, just just look for the grace and the mercy. Look for the grace and the mercy. Yeah, the house might be underwater, but maybe I still got my kids, I, I still got my health, you know. I mean, sometimes we seem like, ah, oh, well, you know, life more important than material things and sometimes it takes losing things to realize what's really important you know and that's why I'm at a lot of times with people I'm talking to you know stand up and fight for what you believe in you know uh, stop being angry with people I'm not talking about this neighbor thing here I'm talking about with loved ones you angry with people and then you can't even remember why. <laughs> You've been angry with a person and they're not talking to each other for so long. You don't even know why. Somebody like, why are you not talking? You can't remember why and they can't remember why. Mend that fence real quick and start talking to one another. Start drinking water. But mend that fence. Mend that fence and start talking to one another. You know. See what's important. Even if you have to visualize if something happened to that person, how would you react? How would you feel? Sometimes just acting, it doesn't work until the reality hits. And then you realize 
wow, you know, I really did care, but I was trying to be hardcore, and I'm waiting for them to come and apologize to me. I'm waiting for them to say something to me. I'm waiting for the opportunity when we place together, and then I deal with it. Well, now, those opportunities might not come. Sometimes you have to initiate the opportunity. Sometimes you have to be the one to come out and say, hey, you know, uh, what you doing today? You know, um, that stuff, whatever we went through, let's squash that and 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 let's be family again. You know, let's be always going to be family, but let, let's be happy. Let's share some moments together. You know, let's be joyous. Let's not keep looking at the past and let's look at the future uh, in that situation, you know. And don't bring it up. A lot of people, well, what was we arguing about? And that'll start another argument. So don't even do that. Just forget about it. And just start talking about something else. But joy comes in the morning. Mm. Yes. God is so good. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. Well... Like I said, um, I wish you peace, love, and joy. I sound like Soul Train, don't it? <laughs> Don Cornelius. Remember, he, oh, my God, it's weird. He came. They said he committed suicide. Remember, they said Don Cornelius of all the people, which, you know, said he committed suicide. There was a lot of stars with money and without money, but look at them. They, they uh, a lot of times finances are, but our drugs related, but look at them. They kill themselves, so. Spirit of suicide, flee in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, come out and restore their minds. Give them security in you, Lord, knowing that you are the protector. You are over finances, Lord. If they made bills and they really want to pay them, Lord, work out a way for them to pay them. If not, let them dismiss them in the name of Jesus. But don't let them be overwhelmed by bills. Don't let them be overwhelmed by relationships that's not working out, Lord. Don't let them be overwhelmed by life, Lord. Don't let them be overwhelmed by the hurricane, the floods, the lights out, Lord, and make them want to kill themselves, Lord. Give them the strength and courage to fight on let them see your glory, Lord. Let your glory, let your name rise above all of the waters, all of the devastation. Let your grace and your mercy go forth, Lord. For you said, Lord, if we just call on you, if we just call on you, you know, you will fulfill our needs. And if we pray, sometimes we got to fast and, and look for the answer. You will answer us. It may not be what we want and in the way we want, but you will answer. Because you're caring, God. You care about us. You're punishing, God, but you care about us too. But you gave us a choice. And that's something that we have to always look at. You're so awesome and so powerful that you gave us a choice to want to be with you or to think that we can walk away from you. You gave us a choice. Wow, how sweet you are, sweeter than honey. Mm. He's sweet, I know. Mm. He's sweet, I know. He is so sweet. God bless you all and keep you. And let our prayers go up. Let our hearts go out to the people that are suffering throughout this world. People who have lost loved ones. God help them.